Welcome back. Welcome back to the information security management system videos provided to you from Advanced Innovation Group. Through this video, let us work at understanding the clause number 9.2, internal audit. You may recall that clause number 9 is about performance evaluation. One of the most acceptable ways of performance evaluation of any management system shall always be internal and external audits. Through this clause 9.2, this standard lays down the basic framework of how internal audits have to be performed within the scope of ISO 27001. Let's read this clause first. It says, the organization shall conduct internal audits at planned intervals to provide information on whether the information security management system A conforms to 1. The organization's own requirement for its ISMS and 2. The requirements of this international standard. B. Is effectively implemented and maintained. The organization shall C. Plan, establish, implement and maintain an audit program including the frequency, methods, responsibilities, planning requirements, and reporting. The audit programs shall take into consideration the importance of processes concerned and the results of previous audit. D. Define the audit criteria and scope for each audit. Select auditors and conduct audits that ensure objectivity and impartiality of the audit process. F. Ensure that the results of the audits are reported to relevant management. And G. Retain documented information as evidence of the audit program and the audit results. One of the most important clauses from the perspective of uh, persons performing as lead auditors will always be internal audit. This is a very important clause of the information security management system from an auditing standpoint. All information security management system and other ISO standards mandate clause number 9.2 as internal audit. An organization must conduct internal audits at planned intervals to provide information on the performance of their management system. And during such internal audits, the internal audit shall check for conformity of the information security management system towards the requirements as laid down by the international standard and also the organization's own requirement as laid down in their information security management system. So conformity to both, conformity to organization needs and conformity to the international standard must be verified. For the internal audit, the organization will need to plan, establish, implement, and maintain an audit program, including the frequency. That is, are we looking at conducting the internal audits every quarter, every six months, or every year? To be able to understand the auditing principles, it is very important for one to look at ISO 19011-2018 for details. Furthermore, the standard requires us to plan, establish, implement, and maintain an audit program, including the frequency, method, responsibilities, planning requirement, and reporting. In order to develop a better understanding of what is the requirement from this 9.2 and specific to this section, it is recommended that you look at ISO 19011 and understand the details of what are the auditing best practices and what should you be very careful of. While putting together the internal audit process, the organization will be required to determine the frequency. How regularly are you looking at conducting the internal audits? 
Is it going to be every three months, six months or, or year? What is going to be the method of the internal audit? Let's look at what ISO 19011 has to tell us about the method. Let's read this 5.5.3, selecting and determining the audit methods. The individuals managing the audit program should select and determine the methods for effectively and efficiently conducting an audit, depending on the defined audit scope, objective and criteria. Audit can be performed on site, remotely or as a combination. So when ISO 27001 asks you to define the method, they are expecting you to define whether it will be an on-site audit, off-site audit or a combination of both. Then you are required to put down the responsibilities, planning requirements and reporting. And the audit program must always take into account the importance of processes and must reference from the previous audit. So whatever during the previous internal or external audit was found as a weakness area in the management system should be of utmost focus during the internal or external audits. So all internal audits should start with the non-conformities or improvement opportunities as identified in the previous audit. And one must look at whether what was previously found to be non-conforming or at risk should be the first thing that the internal auditor or the external auditor should look at. Similarly, depending on the importance of processes, the time allocation and the focus of the audit program must also be exerted. D, defining the audit criteria and scope for each audit. You must establish the criteria against which an audit has to be done. Criteria is nothing but some benchmark. If you see the ISO 19011, it says audit criteria are used as reference against which conformity is determined. These may include one or more of the following applicable policies, processes, procedures, performance criteria, including objectives, statutory and regulatory requirements, management system requirements, information regarding the context and the risk and opportunities as determined by the auditee, including relevant external, internal, interested party requirement, sector codes of conduct, or any planned arrangement. Hence, it is extremely important as part of the internal audit program, we must define the audit criteria and scope of each audit. The audit scope must be consistent with the audit program and the audit objectives. It should include factors like location, functions, activities and processes to be audited, as well as the time period to be covered by the audit. E, select auditors and conduct audits that ensure objectivity and impartiality of the audit process. One of the very important parts of auditing shall always be ensuring that the auditor is impartial. So one must put together processes and controls to ensure that people deployed in the internal audit process remain unbiased and impartial towards the audit objectives. F, ensure that the results of audit are reported to the relevant management. Once the internal audit is completed, the performance of the management system must be reported to the top management and the relevant management as needed. G, retain documented information as evidence of the audit program and the audit results. This is a mandatory documented information. The evidence of the audit program and the audit result is a mandatory documented information that will be referenced at several levels. It must be, ref it must be reviewed by the top management. It will be looked at from an external auditor's perspective. You must look at it when you are looking at doing performance evaluation of your information security management system. And I would recommend that you look at 
the ISO 19011 videos very carefully to be able to develop competence on clause number 9.2. This is a very, very important part of the entire ISO 27001. And if you are looking at pursuing a career as lead auditor, it is important that your internal audit processes are as stringent as possible. Because once the external auditor starts looking at, starts doing independent review of the information security management system, the internal audit documents will be, will be looked at very keenly. And this part of the ISMS documentation, documentation pertaining to clause number 9.2, mustn't have any observations from the external auditor. It reflects on our competence. So please lay a lot of emphasis on understanding the ISO standard of ISO 19011-2018. This is the standard for guideline for auditing management systems. And through this standard, you will be able to understand the terms and definitions involved in auditing, principles of auditing, how do you manage the audit program, uh, how do you conduct the internal audits, how do you conduct audits, including preparation and distribution of audit reports, completing the audit, conducting the audit follow-up, competence and evaluation of auditors. And they will provide you some additional guidance for audit planning and conducting of audit. If you are looking at career of a lead auditor, you must have very good understanding of 1911-2018 as a standard. Please look forward to uh, videos from Advanced Innovation Group on the audit management systems ISO 19011. I hope you found this video on clause number 9.2 useful. Thank you.